Hello friends, it's Cindy Brumbaugh from CindyLeeBDesigns.com, independent stamping up a demonstrator. I have a fun fold with a gift card holder in it for you today. But before we get started, I wanna show you the awesome card I got from my friend, Sarah Rigby. She sent me this and I just loved it. it had the new in colors, the fresh freesia, the pale papaya. And this was my inspiration. It's a gift card holder here. And I was inspired by that and then played around with some of my own supplies. I got out the remaining pieces of my ice cream corner designer series paper and all I had left was the bumblebee and the terracotta tile which I kind of thought the colors were a little dark in that designer series paper. Uh, I liked more of a fresh, bright, cheery one with ice cream, but I came up with this was my first thing. And then I said, ah, I want to be able to carry this over into our new annual catalog because this bundle, the sweet ice cream stamp set, and the ice cream cone builder punch will be in the new an annual catalog. So I came up with this beautiful paper, the Pattern Party. It's actually a host gift in the back of the catalog if you've got your catalog now. And it has all these beautiful colors in it and then on the back side of them are all black and white patterns. So, oh, gorgeous. You get 48 sheets of 12 by 12 paper as a host gift and it's an $18 item. So if you do a $180 qualifying order, you can get that as your host gift. So I used that pattern party paper on this card and let me show you what I came up with. So real simple, the back portion of this is just your quarter sheet of a cardstock, and that's four and a quarter by five and a half. All the measurements, colors, products I use will be on my blog, cindyleebdesigns.com. Just underneath the YouTube video, it says visit my blog here, press that link, it'll take you right over there, and then you'll see additional photos and information for you. So what we do is start out with that back portion, four and a quarter by five and a half, and we're just going to put this beautiful scalloped colored paper here. I'm just gonna use some of my Stampin' Seal Plus. Oh, I hate to cover up that black and white too. It's so pretty, so striking. So this is gonna be a great paper. So I'm just gonna get a nice 1 8 inch border all around, all four sides, as straight as I can get it. And then this coordinating stripe is gonna be on the front of the card. But this flap, now Sarah on her card had her flap like contiguous with the whole card here. Wow, big word, Cindy. But it continues the whole way through underneath this panel. But since I did a little cheater way, um, I still made my width two and three quarters, but I wanted to just fold it right along the back here. And that's the cheater way and you don't have to, um, you know, mess around with it so much. So we're gonna take that two and three quarter inch wide um, you'll, and I just happened to cut it from, this was eight and a half, but we're gonna be using, the length of it is six and three quarters plus one sixteenth. So what we're gonna do is put that longer side up against the top of our trimmer, and we're gonna go over to two inches, and we are gonna score. Now that's my dark cutting blade. This is my scoring blade here. I'm gonna score it two, and then I know that's where it's going to be the fold did flap here. I'm gonna get my bone folder. I think I just moved my camera out of whack here. There we go. And I'm just gonna give a nice burnished edge here on that fold line. Now I'm going to take that folded line here with the two inch cut end here. I'm gonna put this at four and a quarter. Now the reason why I'm gonna put an extra 1 16th of an inch is the first time I made this card, I noticed that my edge was going right not quite to the end and it's because I was, it doesn't take into um, account that amount that's in the actual scored part of the paper. So I then tried it with four and a quarter where the folded line is and then I went over one sixteenth and I scored it again. Scored and then just take that score line that you just made and go over a half an inch and cut it. And then that'll be the flap that folds around towards the back. I always get my shirt caught in the bottom of my stamping trimmer. <laughs> so there we go. So that is the hardest part we're gonna do there on this card here. So there we go. Now this part is going to be going behind. Okay, behind, yes, this is the, <laughs> you fold your little area here. And then this goes behind 
and this is folded over and you can see now it totally is flush here and every time I was doing it before it was just showing up and it was coming to about right there and I could see that red which really wasn't a problem except for when you go to put the designer paper on you want it to line up okay so what we're going to do is we're going to use tear and tape here as um, our adhesive here because you just want a little bit more of a strong secure holding right there so a little tear and tape and I noticed I got a little bit of past where I needed to be so I'm going to snip that off there and then we're going to take that protective coating off with that awesome take your pick tool there we go and we're just going to put that on to it's going on the back of that pretty designer series panel there and then this is going to fold over there you go but now we want to have this cute little part here to pull out here just kind of gives it a little bit so you can use any size of your circle punches I use one and three eighths there but I think I'm going to use a I'm going to use my one and a quarter here. Sorry, guys. I just didn't like, I thought this one was a little bit too big. So any circle will do, but I just wanted to use a little bit smaller one. Just get the same amount of red, um, same amount of cardstock on both sides, and go about halfway, wherever you want. You just want it to be in the middle there. Pop out a little thumb hole, and then we are going to want to adhere this down. Now, we could use tear and tape here, but we're gonna be really tight with that gift card holder. See, it's gonna fit in here, and you'd have to be really perfect with that tear and tape. So what I usually do on these is I just take a real thin bead of Tombow, multi-purpose adhesive. I just put a little bit right along the edge, and it doesn't have to be a lot. You actually don't want it to be a lot because you don't want it smushing because you want to have that space to put that gift card in and then just hold it down. And a little bit of glue will go a long way. And you just have that there. And you know your gift card is gonna fit right in there. Ta-da, there you go. And then this piece that coordinates so beautifully with the scallop, these diagonal stripes, um, there is Poppy Parade in white Flirty Flamingo, Petal Pink, Granny Apple Green. They're saying Pale Papaya is in here. It might be somewhere up in here, but I think this looks more Pumpkin Pie, and this looks more like in the Coastal Cabana range. Um, but this piece here is two and a half wide, and then across here, it is four inches. So we're just gonna put that. And all these measurements, colors, products I use are over on my blog. You just go over pressing that link underneath there and then we're just going to pop that onto the front portion i just think this bright cheery colors just remind me of ice cream i have an ice cream buddy my son-in-law if i just mention the word ice cream he's like where do you want to go when do you want to go let's go <laughs> so chris and i love ice cream and so also does my daughter-in-law, Julianne. Um, so here we go. We can see here is this front panel that's on the front of the card. Now this front panel is two and three quarters by three and three quarters is your bordering one. So this Poppy Parade is three, two and three quarters by three and three quarters. So by the magic of television, haha, a video, I already have this done. Yes. <sighs> I have, I thought I would keep it a secret, but I was making this video and I dropped the punch and everything on my table, the camera, everything went all kaplooey. So I had to start it over again, but I already have this much done. So what I did is I just put some of these cute little um, splotches here, these little sprinkly things here um, in petal pink around that panel. And this was two and a half by three and a half, two and a half three and a half white, 
two and three quarters, three and three quarters. And so I put some petal pink sprinkles around their splotches. And then I used my ice cream punch and I cut out my ice cream cone. And that ice cream cone, you do, the one thing you wanna realize when you're doing a one of these punches is you wanna make sure that you're cutting it. Like for instance, if I stamp this, now look, it doesn't go, it's, it's hard to get to the way it is. You have to actually look at the way you're stamping it. So if I want to, I wanna stamp my image to fit into the punch. So as you can see, this was an example of where I messed it up. So if I were to do this again, I would make sure I would ink up my, and I would say, okay, let's just use this side. I know that I want it to go this way, so I would put, I would stamp it the way it would fit into the punch. And see, now it fits into the punch, and then I can punch it out. So be, and the same thing with my ice cream cone. When I do the, when I did the ice cream cone, is I made sure that I stamped it along the lower edge because for it to go into my punch, I would want it to be on that lower edge and then I would stamp it like that. And then now, of course, then I would have cut off this edge here and then it easily goes in there. But if I had stamped it the other way, it would might have been hard to get it in the other way. So just always look at your punch before you stamp and then it'll make it a lot easier on you. Okay, I'm gonna close some ink pads here. Okay, so I did where, okay, so I did that. Now, oh, here's my one ice cream cone. Oh, well, we might have to just cut this one out because it looks like <laughs> somewhere, but it's a good thing we have this one already punched. So I just put that in there and Make sure I get the same amount of white. Give a nice firm pressure. And then I have my other ice cream cone. Okay, scoop of ice cream. So I'm going to put the first ice cream scoop flat. Just gonna put that right flat. And then I'm gonna put the other one popped up with dimensionals. And that's gonna be I'm gonna put two there, one here. Take those little edges off. Normally I wouldn't have got so bold as to use where you could see that one, but okay, so. But it was laying on the desk. So there's our, my second scoop there. And then I just um, put a sentiment down here. Now this sentiment here, I did a little different. Here I used Poppy Parade and Granny Apple Green, but here I used the Poppy Parade for the sentiment and the border was the Granny Apple Green. So what I'm finding is I used to pop up this on here, but I'm finding that whenever I actually put this um, layering oval into the scallop, it's so much easier if I keep it flat and then I pop up the whole thing on my card. Unless I have a layering oval that's a little bit like one size bigger than the tiny scallop border, it doesn't work as well for me. Okay, so I got to this point and I knew I was gonna add some opals on here, but I still wanted some more frou-frou to my card. So what I did is I went and looked on my thing and I found this flamingo ribbon. And I thought, hmm, that's nice. So I just went ahead and put some flamingo. You could put any color on there that you have. And I am not really, really a good, um, not really good at doing this fancy freeform ribbon thing. So I just kind of put a free edge and then a loop. I'm using my dimensionals as my adhesive. And then I did another loop over here and a free edge here. And I think when I made this one, I actually made it flat and then I put the dimensionals on, which is, but I think I have enough there. And then you just put that onto 
Now, because I have my loop a little bit bigger here, I might just have to adjust it to fit onto my card. There we go. And because I, I think I'm gonna have enough. Yes, I actually did put the ribbon on. There we go. Snip, a little snip. And I just have something, you know, just a little something, something. And then I put the little opal rounds, which also are carrying over, yay. I love these because these opals just turn into any color you want them to be. It just seems like you can see, uh, you know, pinks come out in it. You can see greens, purples. Let me see here. I don't want that big one. And he's just wanting to get off there. Now let's get, I want to be careful to actually be able to get the adhesive back off there. So always kind of bend up your paper a little bit so that you actually get the adhesive back because sometimes the adhesive back will stay on there. So there we go, we decorated up. Now we've got to get the inside done here. Now let's see, where is, okay, let's, we need a full effect here with the gift card in here, okay. So the best way to get this border in here is, first of all, let's stamp. Okay, we've got the same dimensions here. Now on Sarah's, she put the white and it really popped off of the freesia. But since I was using designer paper, when I put the white on there, it just didn't have enough of a pop, so I bordered it. So we have got our piece of two and a half by three and a half whisper white. And what I did is I got the other little sprinkles from the set and I used petal pink. Now that's flirty flamingo. Where's my petal pink? Here's my petal pink. Here we go. And I did not want to mess up my area here, so I'm just going to put a little piece of scratch paper there, and I'm gonna put some sprinkles along the top of here, the top of the inside. Just put some little petal pink sprinkles. There we go. And then I used Poppy Parade for Hope It's Sweet. So we're saying treat yourself with the gift card. Where'd I put the gift card? Here's the gift card. Here's the gift card. I stuck it in the wrong one. So there. So, no, <laughs> we're doing this one. Okay, we're moving around our gift card. So because you're saying Oh gosh, I have too many things going on here. Treat yourself, hope it's sweet with sprinkles on top. And we put the sprinkles on top and we want to do hope it's sweet. And I used Poppy Parade for that because I knew that if I stamped into the petal pink, it's darker. And so I just did little taps for my little words. Then I'm going to pull it a little down towards me. And I'm just going to look at the line of the paper and go down and hope that I'm getting it straight. Hope it's sweet. There you go. And then on the bottom, I just pulled in the granny apple green. So here we go with sprinkles on top and granny apple green. Once again, nice little taps because they're little words. And we're going to put that along the bottom. There you go. And then we're going to mount that onto our little bit of our stamp and seal plus. A little bit goes a long way. It's a really good strong adhesive. And then we'll put that two and a half by three and a half on the two and three quarters by three and three quarters. And then I'll show you the little trick to getting it right in the middle so it covers up. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna turn over and line it up with, well actually, let's go ahead and put some adhesive on here. So we're just putting a little of our adhesive there. We're gonna put it right where that red one on the front is. 
We're gonna very carefully fold it over and now it lines up with the one on the outside. There we go. So we did it guys. <laughs> Many different tries um, are kind of more I guess it's more of a chocolatey type with the brown on there with the earliest, or I think I used soft suede. But um, I like that one, but I really wanted something brighter. So I br brought out this uh, Pattern Party Host DSP that's in the back of the new annual catalog that comes out on May 4th, 2021. So thanks again to Sarah for the great idea for this gift card holder. I haven't made a gift card holder in a long time, and this one is just a perfect set to do it with. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me at 724-323-2296. You can call or text, or you can email me at cindyleeb at gmail.com. Make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I like to post on Wednesdays or any other special days, but usually Wednesday video. And then I usually have regular posts on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and sometimes on other days if I have some fun stuff to share with you. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to call me. I'd love to get comments, and i love to um, hear what's going on in your neck of the woods. Thanks for buzzing by, friends.